It goes way past messaging. I mean, there, there's no strategy. There are no tactics. So this uh, seems to me to be an entirely seat-of-the-pants style way of governance in which whatever strikes the president in any given moment, it, again, the Chinese suggesting they'll retaliate. We don't know what he's going to come back with today. But as you were speaking with Eamon, I mean, the, the notion that you can order American companies uh, to stop doing business in China and disrupt a global supply chain uh, with, the, with a tweet um, argues that, that, that the president doesn't fully understand the economic implications of what he's saying, particularly his attacks also on the Federal Reserve. I mean, that those things taken together uh, seem to indicate that that policy is entirely unmoored. It is unusual, to say the least, Michael Farr, uh, for a U.S. president to describe a person that he has earlier described as his good friend, President Xi, uh, and the Fed chairman of the United States as enemies. Uh, of the United States, yes. Of the United uh, States. It, 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 we, we, we've seen some remarkable comments uh, from this president. And I think from a market's point of view, you know, we can really get bogged down in the parsing of what he had tweeted today. And, and a lot of it leads, uh, leaves us really scratching our heads. I think as investors, we have to step back and say, wait a minute, we've been seeing this since President Trump really took office. He has a... Uh, a very unique style of governing and negotiating in public. Whether you look, Tyler, at his comments that he was going to, you know, put a tariff on everything out of Mexico, or you fill in the blank from the last half dozen tweets, markets react very quickly. They go down very quickly. And then somehow over the next week or two, uh, things get walked back and flattened out, and uh, business tends to go on. We've seen a change here, right? I mean, we've seen a change in this trade We've gone from rhetoric, trade rhetoric with China, to China actually uh, letting their currency drop, to saying that they're not going to buy any more imports. And this now has gone from the name-calling stage in the playground to the sticks and stones stage in the playground. It's not a good thing. Uh, but going back to Chairman Powell, I thought he did a great job this morning, by the way. And the rest of it, boy, investors really have to take a deep breath. Uh, I think Prozac sales must be surging around <laughs> the world for markets. I mean, in terms of the volatility that Michael spoke about, Jack, uh, at some point the rubber hits the road. Um, in September, typically CEOs make lots of decisions about whether or not they're spending or how much they're spending. With the backdrop of this volatility, do we run the risk that these CEOs really pull back? And, and I, I want to you know, remind people of, of the comment that Loretta Mester made this morning to Steve Leisman, that is, we can talk ourselves into a recession at this point. Yeah, in fact, uh, it's already happened. If you look at last quarter's GDP, we, we lost one percentage point on annualized growth because business spending just didn't really happen. Um, and so any uncertainty is certainly going to make uh, business leaders, you know, hesitate uh, from taking out their checkbooks. You know, Ron, before we get too, too, too deep into this, <laughs> let's remember that over the past You'd week... You'd prefer just a shallow response? For, <laughs> over the past week, the S&P is down 1%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Dow is down a half a percent. The Nasdaq <laughs> is down 1.5%. So through all of this, that's where we are. No, we're, we're about 6% we're about off, the highs. 6 yeah. off the highs in a month's time. That's a correction. Yeah, sure. But it feels... It, doesn't it feel a little worse than that? Look, I mean, it, I you know, know, there's been, a, and, and I've been watching all day, the, the, among some of our guests, there's been a fair amount of normalization, again, of, of, of the president's speech, his behavior, his tweets. At some point, there's going to be a straw that breaks this camel's back. We are not dealing with something that is small scale in nature. If we have a full scale trade war with China, and then he decides to put tariffs on European and Japanese cars. You know, Japan and South Korea are in the midst of a trade war. South Korea just pulled back its intelligence sharing agreement with Japan. There are things going on all over the world that could crack the global economy, and people just seem to be whistling past the graveyard almost every day. Does this remind you of the setup going into last year's? Final quarter and final back in some year. respects. I mean, yeah. in terms of we're ramping up in the trade tensions. We're at a point now where the commentary on conference calls will be increasingly, um, you know, pointing to trade and, and global growth as an issue. And that set us up one year ago for a huge decline in the fourth quarter of the year. Yeah, and, and there were there, there were some other issues as well. I mean, I mean the you, Fed message yeah. was a huge one, and, and then Fed yeah. seems out of the way at this point. Out of the way at this point. Fair, yeah. But I, one thing I want to say about the Fed, you know, they, they, they talked, and Steve Leisman did a great job about encapsulating this this morning, about the 95 and 98 
parallels to what the Fed may do with respect to altering its policy. In 1995, the Fed raised rates enough that you had the peso crisis in Mexico, the bankruptcy of Orange County, California, and a major money market fund that broke the buck. They had to turn on a dime and reverse course. In 97 and 98, you had the Asian currency crisis, Russia, and long-term capital. Both of these were effectively financial market liquidity crises. This is not. This is a fundamental economic problem for the world. It's not the type of thing that lower interest rates and more liquidity will help.